Hello everyone and welcome to the Oklahoma News Report. I'm Rich Lyons. On Thursday, our country celebrated Veterans Day and we thought this would be the perfect time to examine how Oklahoma's roughly 296,000 veterans, nearly 8% of our total population, are faring heading into the new year. We have two reports for you, beginning with this look at the state of our veterans as we near the end of 2021. We're able to get eye level, create that bond with that person, and we're able to then discover what the problem is and then simply get them matched up with the therapy that they specifically need. Army veteran Brian Paul is the president and founder of Veterans for Life USA, an Oklahoma City nonprofit that connects struggling veterans with help that this former firefighter once needed himself. It turned into a full-blown addiction to alcohol and I had lost my job there in the fire service and became homeless and even suicidal. A 90-day stay in a treatment center got Paul back on the right track. Unfortunately, his story is not unusual. The mental and physical problems facing Oklahoma veterans is expanding. We provide uh, care to 69,000 veterans uh, as of this year, fiscal year. Uh, that's about 4,000 more than we did last year. So our veteran population is growing rapidly in the state of Oklahoma. Wade Velosich is the medical center director for the Oklahoma City VA health care system. So we have 17 sites of care across Oklahoma. Um, a variety of them are basically community-based outpatient clinics where we provide primary care, mental health, and specialty services in some of them. And if the veterans can't come to the clinics, Velosich says the VA will come to them. We actually were one of the first VAs in the nation to create what we call like a homeless campus. And what it does is we have a homeless primary care clinic that provides uh, basic medical care to homeless veterans that are under bridges and they will actually go out to the homeless camps, they'll go to homeless shelters and they'll provide your medical care right there. And then help them get off the streets. In partnership with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Oklahoma City VA has provided housing to 184 veterans. We've also expanded uh, our ability to pay for emergency department visits and urgent care visits for veterans. And so before we spent about around $120 million a year in community care, and now we're spending up 207 as of last year. And that number is only expected to increase as Oklahoma veterans return home from America's 20-year war in Afghanistan. We've definitely gotten some feedback that veterans uh, uh, from that war are struggling. It's been very difficult for them to, to watch how that developed in terms of how we pulled out. Uh, it also has had the effect of triggering some of the Vietnam veterans, you know, and reminding them of some experiences that they had at the end of the Vietnam War. The good news, many veterans come home eager to create new careers as civilians. There's something about veterans as a, as a group. They tend to be very entrepreneurial. And what we'd like to do is locate all of those companies and interests in Oklahoma and try to help them develop what they're doing and broaden their customer base, maybe do more business with the state, for example. To achieve that, there is an incentive program for veteran-owned businesses to apply for state contracts. But a lot of veteran-owned businesses don't know that, and so we want to help them become aware of that and help them get plugged into that. Kinso believes Oklahoma excels in providing opportunities for its veteran population. Oklahoma actually is one of the most veteran-friendly states uh, of the 50 states. One thing that we'd like to work on is getting rid of the state income tax, the remaining amount that's on military retirements, and, and attract more military retirees to Oklahoma. They tend to be people that have high disposable incomes, they're community leaders, and we would like them to come live here in Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Department of Veteran Affairs helps in other ways as well. They also oversee seven long-term care facilities, and all of them operated under great duress during the height of the pandemic. Our ENT clinic turned into an ICU. Our nursing home had to move up to our surgery clinic, and so we really, we really did struggle. We had about uh, 3,000 uh, veterans who came down with COVID in our catchment area, and of that, we had about 221 that died in our hospital. The federal government is in charge of Oklahoma's two VA hospitals, located in Oklahoma City and Muskogee. And now, under construction in downtown Tulsa, a 58 surgical bed hospital capable of servicing 100,000 veterans that is scheduled to open in 2024. 
I'd just like to say thank you to all Oklahoma veterans. You're a special group of people. At this point in our history, less than 1% of Americans put their hands up and say, send me, but you've done that, and I'm proud to be one of you, and thank you for your service.